He once won a staring contest with John Hamm. If we were playing Jeopardy, the answer would be, who is Michael Schneider? Hey, Michael, nice to see you. Good to be here. You, you are not here for your, uh, your staring prowess. You are here because you are the deputy TV editor for Variety. But give me the context. What was the staring contest all about? Uh, well, I was on the stage at uh, the, the Paley Center in New York and Los Angeles. They do an annual event called the Paley Fest, and they bring on casts and producers of shows like Mad Men. I was moderating a panel for Mad Men featuring all the stars and producers of the show. Sitting right next to John Hamm, I asked him a question uh, you know, about the pregnant pauses on that show. There are a lot of moments on Mad Men where they they just sort of stand there and, and sort of look sullen. And he starts to look at me, and I realize I'm in a staring contest with John Hamm. So... I'm going to take advantage of this staring contest. And we sat, sat there. We started staring at each other. The audience at first wasn't sure what was going on. Eventually, they got into it. They started clapping. And then it got a little awkward because it turns out John Hamm is as competitive as I am. And neither of us was going to give this up. He finally blinked first, although to this day, he claims that he won the contest. So there's, there's still debate over who actually won, but I, I still claim victory. You got that going for you, which is <laughs> nice. I am uh, I'm intrigued by the Mike Richards story about Jeopardy. You've been writing extensively about it. I confess I am not a big Jeopardy fan. There's a bar that I like to go to where it's on every night. And I often am drinking beer and eating pizza there and I kind of get sucked in, but I'm not a real true aficionado. But the, the plot line of this whole thing really has captivated me. Yeah. Here's what most surprises me. And you you write about this. What most surprises me about the guy who got the Alex Trebek gig after Trebek was gone, and he apparently was the Dick Cheney of the process in terms of leading the search, and now he's out. Correct me if I'm wrong, but he, he did a day's worth of taping as the host. That's a full week of shows, and they will still air. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's their plan right now. Now, this is a fast-moving story, so we still have a couple of weeks before the season premiere in September. They may still change their mind or find a way to scrub those episodes, but as of now, they're planning on actually airing all five episodes, which is quite awkward now. So what's the Cliff's Note version? Who is he and how did he get the gig? Well, so Mike Richards uh, sort of began as, as more of a TV show host. He was a reality show host, had a bunch of shows under his belt. Uh, he actually tried out to be host of The Price is Right when Bob Barker left, uh, but ended up going down the producer route, started producing Price is Right, uh, Let's Make a Deal, the revival of that show, and, and a few others. Uh, and uh, a couple years ago, switched over to Sony TV, where they produce Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune, and became producer of those shows as the longtime producer of Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune stepped down. And that brought us to the passing of Alex Trebek, and suddenly he was in charge of trying to find a new host for the show. And looky here, ended up casting himself, and that's where all of this really fell apart. Any evidence that it was all by design, that from the get-go of that search process, he had himself in mind? There definitely is a lot of talk and, and a lot of folks who really pay attention to the, the game show world, who know all these players, who know Mike Richards well. They, 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 they sense that this was all part of a, a plan that he always wanted to host, that that was sort of his 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 real desire, more than producing. And so coming over to Jeopardy!, uh, from the beginning, he sensed that there was going to be an opportunity once Alex Trebek was no longer a host, that he wanted to be in the race. And he was in the perfect position to uh, maybe put his thumb on the scale a little bit and, and make sure that he was definitely in the running, if not the top contender. So he gets the gig, must be on top of the world, begins now to, to actually film programs and then comments that he made previously, seven, eight years ago in a podcast context come to light. By the way, begging the question, from me at least, given the volume, the dollars that were involved in this show, how could they not have done a full vetting to find out what has he ever said or written? That's what's still astonishing to all of us. And, and knowing even beforehand that there were there was some problematic elements to him. Uh, you know, he was involved with some lawsuits back in the days of the Price is Right, some wrongful terminations uh, 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 suits 
So some of the models on the show uh, uh, sort of allege some harassment. So there were some concerns from the start. You put that on top of just the overall outrage that a number of fans had in that this executive producer suddenly uh, was was chosen a host, which from an optics perspective was not good. You have to make sure at that point, because fans are angry, casual fans are sort of what's going on over here, that this guy better be squeaky clean and Sony better have done, you know, dotted the I's, crossed the T's, which obviously they didn't since they didn't even know about this podcast, which Again, they should have because Mike Richards hosted it himself while in his offices at The Price is Right. It was not a secret that he had hosted a morning shock jock style talk show. So you, you, you get one of your lackeys, you get one of your you know interns to listen to all 48 episodes just to make sure, right? But no one did. They didn't even know this podcast existed. And yeah, that it's, it, it's pretty stunning that they just did not do their homework. Michael Schneider, how bad is it, though? Because I, I asked for my own producer to get me a clip of what it is that jammed this guy up, ultimately, having read that he'd made comments that I heard described as anti-Semitic, that's not good, or that he had complimented the the breasts of, of a colleague or co-worker on the podcast. When I listened to it, I, I heard, you know, sort of 70s style AM DJ-ish uh, sexual connotation dialogue. I didn't hear the part about whatever it is, he said that about people who are Jewish. And I thought, geez, I don't, I don't know if what I'm hearing is the extent of it, but I don't know that it should cost someone their job either. Yeah. And, and, and I don't, you know, you're, you're right in that. I, I hear more on morning radio all the time, morning zoo shows. And, and I think that's right. fine when you know it's a morning zoo show and a morning zoo show a host. I think the problem here was the optics. This guy is not a morning zoo host. He is the producer now of Jeopardy. What are you doing, doing a shock jock morning show podcast when you know the optics are not good, especially on top of those uh, uh, sexual harassment lawsuits at the prices, right? So you layered it on top of that, you layer it on top of people who are just outraged in general that this guy was chosen host over all of the other candidates. They feel that that whole, uh, you know, series of guest hosts was a sham. They're pissed off. They're looking for anything to be angry at. And when you have a host who seems kind of, you know, a little sleazy now, that's that's not good for the brand. So yeah, they could have kept them there, but at this point, it just didn't feel right. Jeopardy is a billion dollar industry uh, for, for Sony. They knew that this was not going to sit well forever. It had been sort of tainted uh, and, and there's no reason, you know, you, you, you you cut bait now rather than later. And, and so I think you add it all together. It's not about really what he said on the show, on that podcast. It's more just about the entire morass. It's that entire stew of everything that's gone on that just left everyone with like, a, what are we doing here? This is not the right choice. We need to cut bait. It's also amazing to me, notwithstanding Alex Trebek's health, that given the enormity of this franchise, that there wasn't a succession plan anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing we've all been talking about. Why wasn't there a succession plan? You know, it, no matter what, Alex Trebek wasn't going to be host forever. And then when he right. did reveal his illness, we knew there was a, a, a time clock. Uh, but for whatever reason, they, they couldn't figure out what to do. Alex had his own idea of some successors. And I think the general sense was Ken Jennings, one of the you know most winning contestants in history was going to be the obvious choice. And then he kind of stepped into it a little bit on his Twitter feed. And that I think caused Sony to pause and say, let's stand back, let's do a real search and let's really figure out what's going on. Ironically now- But one of, yeah, I was gonna say one of my colleagues, a colleague both here at Sirius XM and at CNN, Laura Coates apparently was on the Trebek shortlist. Yeah, and somehow never got an, an option, uh, the opportunity to even guest host, which, you know, maybe now she will, since there's going to be another round of guest hosts. And, and I can see some folks who didn't get the chance last time, like Meredith Vieira is another name that pops up, might get a chance now that they're going to do another round of, of host, uh, guest host. But yeah, it, it, uh, it, it did seem like they, they should have had a plan in place. So finally, what happens next to Mike Richards? Does he get a golden parachute and then that's it? 
Yeah, that's that's the big question. He'll definitely get some sort of golden parachute. He has a huge deal at Sony that he signed just a year or two ago. So either he sticks around and they find a way to get him new work, more, more likely they settle him out. Um, you know, the big question now is, will he be satisfied with that? Will there be a wrongful termination lawsuit? I mean, this, this story's not quite over yet. The next question now is, what happens to Mike Richards? And then, of course, the question after that is, okay, who's really going to be host of Jeopardy? And we don't know the answer to the latter question either. True? True. Um, you know, I still, there's there's a part of me that still feels like ultimately Ken Jennings makes the most sense. Uh, you know, ironically, after everything that happened with Mike Richards, uh, whatever Ken Jennings did on Twitter, he's apologized dramatically. It feels sort of tame in comparison. And, and I think people will just sort of be relieved to have someone who's so connected to the franchise as host. But We'll see. They they really need to make a decision before the end of the year. Uh, they can't let this linger too long, but I think they are going to take a breather now and not have Jeopardy in the headlines for a change. I think they would be happy to go underground for a couple of weeks or, or months. Michael Schneider, well done. Thanks so much for joining me. Yeah, definitely. Good to be here.